Uh, so thank you so much, Paul. And uh, I'm so glad that you invited me to talk today about PyCharm and how our users can benefit from it and to learn more about our product. And um, we also need your live feedback about what can be improved, what can I as a um, technical writer can do better. So the plan for me today is to talk about the help itself and cover some tips to ensure you're using it right. And then I'll be giving, as Paul said, some small demos uh, to show car completion, uh, how to set a project interpreter, and how to configure the scope of your project resources. And um, at the end of our webinar, we would like to know your opinion on what can make the overall experience with Python better. In particular, uh, what can we do to improve the onboarding experience from this moment when you open Python for the very first time until the moment when you actually uh, feel comfortable and able to work with uh, your typical development wor workflows. And after each session, I'll be happy to answer questions. And uh, if somehow I forgot to stop, I'm sure that Paul will ping me. So let's start. So the first question uh, about how to get how to get to there, how, where is our web hub? I think that uh, the question uh, is pretty easy because uh, you can just Google for it. And um, one of the very first item in the search rank uh, will be our help topic. So the most popular topic in our help is how to configure Python interpreter. Uh, over last month, we have uh, 100,000 uh, visits to this page. Uh, it proves the idea that uh, people are interested in how to configure. And it proves the idea that uh, we, uh, the experience uh, and the procedure in our product is not that uh, quite straightforward and requires some um uh requires some help actually requires some uh assistance uh, uh so um another option to get to our help topic is just to press this question sign right or f1 or function and f1 uh from the product itself and here you'll be also forwarded to the uh to the right topic um and of course, you can uh, also open the help right from the product where you have this help menu and you can also uh, be navigated to the help. So, right. Luckily, we're here. And uh, uh, now let's see how to navigate through and uh, find the required content. So first, let me uh, say that PyCharm is our uh, PyCharm help is version specific. So this this is default uh, URL. Uh, that uh, shows uh, the content for the latest release version of PyCharm, which is now 2022. And you always can switch to the earlier version by using this feature, right? We can just go there and you will see that you are given the decapitation for the earlier versions of PyCharm. So you can get back to the current version. That's quite, quite easy. And um, uh, also how to find the target topic. Uh, sometimes you are not sure what you are looking for, just want to get some information, say, about that framework. So uh, you can just go to this uh, table of content uh, where quite easy to navigate. And we specifically structure it to have these uh, uh, use cases, uh, develop, development use cases like web development or scientific tools. You can find some topics that are specific to these particular uh, tasks. Oh, for example, version control, databases, and others. Uh, but sometimes you're uh, looking for some specific term, right? So then there is the uh, built-in search mechanism. You can just uh, type whatever you want, but I do recommend it to use this full text search. Just press Control and key, and something like Python package. And here you find how to create Python packages, how to install and install, and so you can find any information you are looking for. Um, so great. Um, another option, uh, oh yes, uh, in our PyCharm Hive, we do a lot of references to shortcuts. Uh, because uh, PyCharm, as well as uh, other IDs uh, by JetBrains, uh, provide you with a shortcut for every significant action so that you can keep your hands on the keyboards while coding. Uh, and uh, by default, our help system auto-detects your operating system and offers the right 
platform, right? So, for example, this I would just to illustrate on this topic because there are a lot of shortcuts here, right? So, for some reason, you might uh, your primary uh, working environment might be say Mac OS, and uh, by some reason you uh, you're reading this documentation on Windows. So, to know your shortcuts on Mac OS, you can just switch and get your Mac specific shortcuts. And last but not least, uh, you know that PyCharm is available in various uh, in various um, editions, and uh, it's PyCharm Professional, PyCharm uh, Community, and uh, if you also install the uh, Idu plugin, uh, you will have this kind of a third edition of PyCharm, PyCharm Education, uh, and uh, we have the some uh, features of PyCharm are available only in the PyCharm Professional, so we specifically mark this type of, uh, say for Django, right? Specifically uh, mark this uh, topic that are specific to the PyCharm Professional with this disclaimer. So this is a professional feature and uh, we provide it with a link to the um, PyCharm Professional uh, trial version. Uh, you can use it for 30 days and decide whether to go with PyCharm Professional, the paid version or not. Um, okay, uh, now uh, you can find the uh, required content uh, for in the PyCharm help. And uh, before we start into looking into the demos, uh, I'm going to draw your attention to the feedback widget. So the, your feedback uh, is very important and I can, uh, during my demos and uh, during explaining how I uh, work on my uh, on the health topics uh, related to a particular feature of PyCharm, I explain you how your feedback actually influences uh, the way we develop uh, the project, the product itself, the PyCharm, the ID, and uh, also we uh, maintain and we develop the health topics. So here uh, below the page, uh, below, um, at, the, at the bottom of the every page, you have this question. Was this page helpful? And the two questions, two answers, yes or no. If you uh, just press yes, uh, of course, as, a, as an owner of this page, I'll be happy. But uh, this uh, wouldn't allow us to leave a feedback, right? So please, if you have any specific feedback regarding this feature or regarding this health topic, please don't hesitate to press this no. Here you will have this uh, form uh, that you can submit and let us know what do you think. It's a very good, uh, it's a very good uh, way to report a problem in Patreon or report a problem in the help topic or ask your question or just show your opinion, show your emotions. Even if you type something like more examples, uh, this button will be enabled and you can send this feedback, but without a proper email in this form, uh, we wouldn't be able to reach you and provide the answers and resolve the problem with any. So, but if you leave your email here, uh, the corresponding then desk uh, ticket will be created in, in our support system and uh, I will be notified as well as our support engineers. So you can get a qualified um, response from the PyCharm team and this is uh, just a, a huge um, help for me to improve um, the help page and this is a also good feedback for PyCharm developers to improve the overall experience, user experience for the particular workflow in PyCharm. So please, please feel free to use this uh, feedback widget and this is um, what uh, what is very important to us. And actually I'm done with this small intro part and um, all, um, I'm ready to answer any questions if we have uh, any questions by this time. Uh, so. Do we have any? Sure, I've, got, I've got two. We've gotten a lot of questions coming in, uh, trying to handle most of them, but two of them I think would be better for you. Um, normally applications have a PDF user manual. Do you have any plans to publish one? So currently we don't have any PDF forms. The only PDF artifact that is available within PyCharm and I can show you it's the, um, we have the Keymap reference. Uh, so I all right. have to 
open. So this is what can be printed, right? And can be used offline. Uh, so the rest of the Pytram help is uh, just the uh, just the uh, online form. This is the state for now. Okay, great. Uh, is there a learning path on how to quickly spin up on PyCharm professional features such as Notebook, Docker, for folks coming from the community edition? This is an interesting question. Oh, yes, it's a very important question. So we never thought, of this, and this is uh, somehow uh, uh, intersects with the idea of onboarding because sometimes uh, we need to onboard not just the newbies, right, but and Patreon, but those who want uh, who worked in their community edition and uh, decided by some reason to move to the uh, to the uh, professional edition. We do have some specific tutorials, for example, like. Um, create and run a first application, uh, first Django application. But this is not uh, provides your full experience of moving from community uh, edition to professional. Uh, I think it's just a very good uh, kind of feedback uh, that I am asking for, uh, asked for already. And uh, I think this is for me, it's uh, um, an action item to think about a kind of a, like either migration guide or some some learning path. Yeah. So thank yeah, you for this question. I'll do one more follow up on that um, and then yeah. turn it back over to you. Ala, you and I have talked about learning paths and organizing things for beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And maybe yes. this smells a little bit like a learning path. Uh, yes, you exactly. Be the professional? Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, initially we thought about learning paths, right? Like uh, uh, the uh, steps and workflows to learn some are uh, uh, like features or specific development cases in Python, but this is also kind of a case. So yeah, we definitely need to think about it. Yeah, it's a very good point for us to think. Right. So if you're if you're listening, uh, give us a comment or ask a question or make a point. Uh, if you would value having the help and other information organized by paths such as what level you are. Um, so back to uh, you, Ala. Okay, uh, great. So I'm going to start with the first uh, demo. And it's a kind of a very popular feature and we all love it a lot. It's a code completion in PyCharm. And let's start with this uh, help topic. Um, so uh, we have our many procedures in this uh, completion uh, section uh, and there are a lot of uh, type of completion because uh, depending on the uh, uh, languages uh, supported in the ID there are a lot of uh, different uh, variations of the completion so let's start with something very basic and I will show you this in my PyCharm so basic completion is uh, something that can be invoked quite easily. We'll start typing the name of the variable and it will be just uh, prompted to you, right? And I want to now type this dot and uh, Python will complete uh, the methods and functions. So let's say something, say state, right? And that's quite easy. It's the basic completion that is available in Python. It's easy and uh, uh, you all, when you work in Python, you uh, uses all the time without uh, like any additional thoughts. So uh, what else can be uh, discovered here? Also like the uh, statement completion. When you have, when you can complete, for example, a method declaration or some code constructs like this, let's see what can be do. For example, we want to type something like while true and then I can just uh, press this and then the this uh, column will be added. I can say that's just so this a very uh, basic and very simple uh, construct uh, completion. Uh, also, I want to show you one thing uh, that is available in the latest uh, latest versions of Python, but it's also nice. Uh, it's a F string completion. You can just press again the verbal and then, then like this, right? And you can see that PyCharm simply adds this F without any 
like any additional actions required from the user just at its identity. Uh, also, mm, oh yes, I'm going to demonstrate to you the, my favorite uh, shortcut in PyCharm, it's double shift. So by using it, you can find any action, any class and any symbol. So what I'm looking for now is just code completion. And you can see there are two items. The first is just the pop-up. Uh, you can invoke it, any type of completion you are looking for, right? And you can see which completion you are interested in, right? And uh, you can also open the core completion settings. We can see what we can do here. So, uh, for example, uh, I'm encouraging you to try this um, type of completion like machine learning assisted. Uh, it's enabled in my PyCharm, but uh, it's disabled by default for time being. But when you use this uh, rank completion uh, suggested based on machine learning, you can see how the, for example, let's explore it again, how the uh, position of this, uh, for example, uh, item in the list of suggestions, like say break, right? It was moved uh, one position down. Or for example, let's see, so the uh, while was moved uh, uh, eight position up, right? So you can see how machine learning actually influences the way uh, these suggestion items are sorted in this list. So it's quite interesting. You may try it to see uh, how this uh, how this works for, for example, for your project, right? For your uh, for code completion for your project, and. Uh, uh, also, um, I'm going to show you the path completion. It's quite simple, but very nice. I also enjoy it when uh, um, I need to uh, uh, add paths to any files or directories, for example, I can use like this and uh, path completion will show me all the paths in this directory or I can do like uh, this and uh, for example, I can have this and the select, for example, all Python files in this directory, okay? Uh, and a um, very interesting type of completion is smart completion. See, we have a very simple function, but it's uh, for uh, uh, PyTram, it's really hard to understand uh, the type, to get the type of uh, variable. So when I want to complete, I want actually to add remove. But uh, the basic completion wouldn't allow me this because uh, it's, uh, it's really hard to understand what's there. But when uh, I apply the uh, smart completion, let's see, we need to wait a bit because PyTram collects information about whatever we have in this environment, about all the packages, everything else. And thus I can find the required function. I can find this remove. Okay, um, so let's see what else in our Python help. Um, so I mentioned the uh, F uh, string completion. Also, we have post, uh, post fix completion, and uh, there are some examples how this looks like. So you can just uh, uh, use this, uh, press this uh, uh, arg and press the dot, and then you will these constructions will be moved into the if arg like this. We can also experiment with this a bit later. So, um, so it's basically about it. And there are some troubleshooting items if something goes wrong, because uh, mm, you can find it here and you can see uh, what can uh, influence the way uh, your code uh, is completed in PyCharm. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, Paul, do we have any questions right now about uh, this uh, help topic and about the core completion? We uh, have quite a few actually, um, <laughs> trying to keep up on things. Uh, it's funny, just before, like five minutes before you showed the ML autocomplete, someone mm -hmm. asked the question, uh, should I use the PyCharm autocomplete or get the Kite plugin? And I knew you were about to say it, and so I had to reply saying, just wait five minutes so you'll get an answer to that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, but Andre, uh, the team lead for PyCharm, just wrote uh, in to say the ML completion is now on by default in recent releases. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we will need to check it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next question is, um, to me, pie, this is a little bit of a long write-up, but I wanted you to hear the whole thing. To me, PyCharm Pro has almost infinite features like Word or Excel, where we only use very few. And believe me, we talk about this all the time. Uh, is there a way to check what features it has for a specific Python package like Flask? Normally we start from the very basic and manually do most of the part, then later realize that PyCharm could have helped us a lot if we knew in advance. Oh, Alo, this sounds like a question that you and I planted so that it would be asked. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, well, actually, uh, we are have this uh we do uh we don't think about discoverability of our features because we do have uh, them a lot uh, uh actually and although we create like specific uh topics and specific tutorials let me show you let me demonstrate uh since we start talking about flask for example uh we do have these uh, tutorials on how to create web application with flask and we uh in this tutorial, we do not just uh, explain how to create an application from from scratch, but rather how to uh, how to use the features uh, that uh, PyCharm provides you uh, to go with Flask and to take the most of uh, the IDE uh, when developing Flask application. But also, uh, we as a team working on the new plugin. Uh, that uh, will also help you to discover more features about uh, PyCharm. Uh, the plugin is uh, named uh, ID Feature Trainer, and with this, uh, you can uh, already install it. Uh, it's available on the marketplace, so you can try it and see how it works with PyCharm. Uh, for, for now, uh, there are several lessons that you can uh, go through and uh, learn about. In particular, there are some lessons, some very nice features about, some very nice tasks in these lessons about uh, code completion as well. So you can uh, install it and see how it works. And I'm sure even though if you're an experienced user of PyCharm, you will have something new to learn about uh, about code completion because there are a lot of features that are hidden. So that's, that's quite, so I do recommend you to try this plugin. Right, the feature trainer plugin. We might bring you back for another webinar in a few months about that because I think that could wind up being a big deal. Sure. Uh, I'd like to uh, let everyone know we're going to be answering a lot of questions in this webinar and getting a lot of feedback that more so than other webinars. So uh, please have patience on this. I want to do a follow up on this point about there's so much already there. And I like to joke that I work for the company and each day I wake up knowing I know 1% of the product and during the day it's going to change 2%. <laughs> and so I feel the same thing that everyone else does. But Alma, could you talk a little bit about you know, uh, kind of a change over the last couple of release cycles where we've really focused on surfacing our features and making them more visible? Uh, uh, sure, of course. Uh, so over the last releases, I think this brings us to the next topic, right? Can I proceed actually with the configuring a Python interpreter? Because uh, this is uh, one of the, as I mentioned, this is one of the most popular uh, topic in the PyTron Web Help. And this is the topic I rewrite regularly from one release to another release because <laughs> are we uh, because uh, there are so uh, much to add to the user experience uh, i mean from the help point of view uh, to explain something additionally and to, there's so much to document from the product perspective because uh, our uh, team our pie chart team constantly uh, evaluates user experience and constantly uh, add some uh, to this uh, workflow, particular to configuring Python interpreter to make this experience even better, even
even smoother, even are uh, kind of logically uh, structured and prepared currently. Uh, so this is the version of 2022, uh, and currently we're working on further improvements. So uh, for the next releases, you will see that these topics uh, also change uh, significantly to reflect the changes in the product. So let me just start with. So basically, uh, like you just need uh, to to execute any script, any code in Python, you just need to have the configured uh, project interpreter. Without Python, without interpreter or environments, you cannot just execute uh, your code. Uh, so uh, from one release to another release, we uh, were looking for the way to make uh, this uh, configuring process uh, easier. Uh, about a couple of releases ago, uh, this uh, new widget, this switcher, uh, appeared, and now we can just uh, open, uh, we can switch to any interpreter that is already configured in Python, and we can just preview these uh, interpreter settings that is currently configured for, for this project. So uh, here you can see uh, one of the mostly visited uh, dialogue. Uh, in our product and uh, here what we have in the help topic. So first, uh, this is an overview of the uh, what what kind of interpreters available uh, for configuring, right, right? So basically, in most cases, you will be creating for your pro project, you will be creating a virtual environment, and uh, it can be uh, VNF, it can be PPAN, or it can be Conda. Uh, for PyCharm Professional, you can also configure uh, remote interpreters that work on the remote environments like SSH or virtual boxes like the Grant or uh, WSL or Docker-based interpreters, Docker, Docker Compose. Uh, so you can create uh, a new Python interpreter for a project or can reuse the existing one. Let's see what can we do right now. So let's add a new interpreter for your project. So by creating a new environment, you need to uh, select, a, uh, you need to provide first the path to the uh, Python uh, on your machine, and uh, you can select like various versions. And uh, then you need to uh, you need to provide the location and environment location directory should be unique, like it's not. Uh, so currently, by Trump proves that this location is already has some environment. So let's do something like this, uh, and then we can create this new environment uh, to work with. Also, we can reuse the existing environments. Uh, why it might be helpful? For example, you work uh, with uh, virtual ends, uh outside of Pacham, you know for sure that you have the virtual environments, you can just select it from the list, or uh, if you cannot discover it here, you can just provide a path to this uh, environment and work with this. And uh, uh, from the feedback messages that I mentioned uh, uh, already, uh, we uh, received a lot of uh, complaints and questions about that people um, at some point cannot uh, detect the environment. So in this release, uh, we put more uh, features uh, and put more techniques to um, detect, how to detect the environment and suggest to use them if there are already environment are configured uh, and and was configured for this particular project uh, on your machine. Uh, so this is one of the enhancements. Another enhancement also uh, implemented uh, by the Poetran team was that when you create a new interpreter, uh, for some um, uh, users, it wasn't uh, obvious that uh, you had to had to install uh, Python on your machine. And then uh, we come up to this workflow. So if uh, during this process of creating either a new project or configuring a new, uh, um, new environment, uh, if there are no Python detected, uh, then, uh, for example, there are two uh, reasons for this. Either uh, the users either doesn't have uh, any Python installed on um, on his or her machine, um, and then we uh, provide an option to download it from Python.org, the latest available version, or 
uh, the Python might be installed in some uh, like very exotic location that is not detected by PyCharm. So then we uh, also provide uh, the way to uh, just to press this button and uh, and um, uh, provide the path to the uh, actually where the Python uh, to the Python location. Uh, so this is how uh, your feedback uh, influences the uh, PyCharm Web Help and the product itself. Uh, so uh, another uh, um, thing I changed uh, in this help topic was uh, when actually uh, our users uh, um, let me just when our users uh, presses this F1 button, they was uh, also uh, interested not just about configuring Python interpreter, but rather uh, in uh, what can be done for the selected interpreter, right? We have the list of the packages, of the installed packages. And uh, um, although um, we have uh, a separate topics uh, on how to configure, how to install, install and upgrade uh, packages, I think that uh, this particular page also required some uh, explanation on what can be done here. So I put this in for example, this section explaining so how we can add, how we can upgrade, add new packages or upgrade the existing one, what can be done here. So let's just try to experiment and uh, add some package right now. I'll say, let's see, we can specify the version. We can specifically uh, select the one of the previous version, if needed, you can specify the uh, some um, options, common line options of the pip command. So basically, it will just be same when you execute the pip command to install any package. Uh, so this uh, uh, UI uh, basically does uh, absolutely the same thing. And now we have this package. Let's see where is it. Yeah, so we can see we can upgrade it right now um, to have the uh, latest available uh, version of this package. Uh, and that's basically it. Another interesting thing that I also want to uh, show right now is that here we have the complete list of the all packages environments and they have a specific item like this is the icon for the virtual environment. This is a condo. This is kind of a system uh, interpreter. You can also edit uh, any environment, uh, any type of interpreter and set like a uh, unique name. Uh, so that you can distinguish between these interpreters uh, when you switch uh, in this uh, uh, interpreter switcher. And you can also uh, add uh, and edit the path for the selected interpreters. Let me show it. And then you can uh, add uh, and remove any path to some specific uh, like uh, lips and uh, some specific directories uh, for this uh, interpreter. So um, that basically it. And uh, Another very interesting thing uh, I want to also mention is the uh, I uh, often I uh, got through this feedback widget. I got the question, uh, do you have any default uh, interpreter in PyCharm? Do you have any like default configurations for a project interpreter? And actually, there is some uh, thing that we can configure. Um, it's right here in the new project settings and setting for the new project, right? And you have a specific uh, option to configure the project interpreter that will be selected as a base uh, interpreter for uh, the newly created project. So once you set up it, you can just reuse it. So this uh, configuration option will work for a new project. Uh, later, you can create uh, additional uh, virtual environments, but uh, this interpreter can be used as a based one. Um, well, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, just, I uh, just want to repeat my point that uh, your uh, feedback is uh, very important because uh, knowing what uh, our users uh, think about uh, the product itself about the uh, procedures in PyCharm workflows in PyCharm is very important to make them better. And I'll 
Any any questions? Any comments on this? Sure. Uh, I'll start with the the thing you just said about feedback. Uh, you and I have talked a little bit about it. How feedback about docs, including the feedback on the page, feeds back into development. And uh, people might be surprised to know when we do our roadmap planning meetings before a release and we decide what to do, you provide input about what people are struggling with, what is hard to explain. Can you talk a little bit about the about how documentation feeds into development? Uh, absolutely, sure. So um, as I uh, already mentioned, so uh, each uh, question uh, and uh, each feedback message uh, in particular uh, sent via Zendesk uh, system uh, is somehow converted into the message to the development team. And uh, if, for example, uh, many users uh, complains about uh, the same problem or uh, report uh, the same issue, that's definitely uh, an actionator for us to change uh, the product behavior, the feature behavior. Uh, and uh, uh, for us, uh, I mean, uh, for a technical writer and the development team, we think about how to do brainstorming, to think how to name the things correctly, how to uh, provide like the better flows uh, of the, uh, like, for example, the uh, interpreter configurations uh, to make it easier to uh, avoid some confusion and uh, over past, uh, I can recall over what, two past releases, uh, we did a lot of things, a lot of changes here. And uh, the things are still in the progress. We are evaluating uh, uh, users' feedback. Uh, in particular, uh, we do measure visits to every page uh, in our health topics. And I regularly report about the number of visits to some uh, pages, the number of users spent on the pages, uh, reading the content. And we use this information, like this Google Analytics uh, stuff, use this information to understand uh, which uh, topics, uh, health topics, uh, draw user attention. So this might be a problem for user experience. So uh, we uh, add, in, add in more functionality, add in more clarity to the configuring project interpreter, uh, make this topic less popular in um, uh, like in half of the year than it was in the previous years. And uh, this proves that maybe, maybe uh, the situation uh, gets a little better with this and we're moving in the right directions with our enhancements. So this is uh, a very important thing. Okay, on to a next one. Uh, what is the process for keeping documentation up to date with each release? You mentioned about the interpreters window changes quite frequently. What's it like for you? What kinds of tasks do you have to do to keep things up to date? Um, thank you for the question, Paul. <laughs> it's my favorite topic. So yeah, we do, uh, we work on close contact and close cooperation with the development team. We do have the uh, Utrecht system with uh, specific uh, uh, tags uh, for documentation. So uh, each time a new feature uh, appears, uh, I'm notified because engineers use this tag to notify me and to create a separate uh, U-Track uh, ticket for documentation for PyCharm Web Help. So uh, we work uh, like uh, in sync with the uh, uh, development, the development team. And uh, also we do have uh, a, lot, a series of uh, early access uh, builds, uh, the early access builds for the early access program, programs when you can uh, try uh, a new uh, release of PyCharm that is not available yet, uh, some advance. And uh, with each EP build, I try to document uh, the new feature that actually gets into this build. And uh, so, so that when you try this new feature, uh, uh, you already have some uh, documentation, some uh, help uh, describing what the feature looks like or how to use this uh, new feature or uh, if there are any enhancements to the existing one, uh, then should be some uh, change also in the documentation. We handle this through the, uh, the uh, UTRAC tricks. 
Okay, one more question and before I give it as a reminder, just after we wrap up this segment, we're going to talk about something called onboarding, which is someone new to PyCharm downloads it. What is their first hour? What is their first three hours, first couple of days like? And what can we do better? What are some fresh ideas from you that we can do better about making them successful getting started with PyCharm? So one more question before we switch over to that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the documentation um, and WebStorm and DataGrip, which are included, and the platform, which is included, and the bigger picture of documentation for JetBrains products? Yes, yes, of course. So uh, PyCharm um, is a is a kid in the family of uh, uh, other. Uh, JetBrains ID and similarly PyCharm Web Help uh, is also belongs to the family of the uh, PyCharm uh, of uh, um, JetBrains Web Helps for other IDs. We reuse content uh, from the areas uh, that are specific to particular ideas. For example, uh, uh, WebStorm uh, is specific for web development. So these particular topics, the non Python specific web frameworks, but rather the JavaScript story. So uh, these uh, topics uh, uh, are reused from the uh, WebStorm help and they're customized to ensure that uh, they reflect uh, like they reflect um, uh, PyCharm specific, right? The UI changes may be specific in UI or in some uh, workflows. And uh, similarly, the uh, database uh, functionality is also uh, reused from the data grip help as uh, so um, I totally rely on the uh, on this work of my uh, colleagues from other uh, IDs and uh, also I customize the tasks uh, I customize these topics to make sure they uh, work for PyCharm but uh, like in general this uh, functionality works uh, uh, absolutely uh, identical uh, in those IDs and the PyCharms uh, the health topics are also almost identical. Okay, great. We only have a few minutes left. We'll go ahead and start talking a little bit about this onboarding topic. Uh, Olive, if you could switch back to my screen. Uh, I will do yes. that if that's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And screen two. All right, great. So again, onboarding is people that have just downloaded. We want them to have a positive experience. It's a PyCharm is a big product. It can do a lot of things. We don't want it to be overwhelming. Some of these people are new to Python. Some of these people are experienced with Python, but coming from other tools. And what we want to do is give them the right information for the right people at the right time. Uh, Ala, I think you felt a little bit that the that the feature trainer plugin, as it evolves, could be really useful for this. Yep, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes. So we're looking for some um, uh, mechanism to create a kind of an onboarding tour, actually, to provide uh, a beginner with the full path. Uh, through the um, ID, through the PyCharm, explain what's and where in the in the user interface, and uh, also um, provides with a very basic workflow that uh, leads to some uh, developer success, like uh, writing code, uh, running it, uh, maybe debugging it uh, with some smart uh, code assistance tips uh, that is available that are available in PyCharm. So this is the the task of this. We are working on this. Yeah. Sorry, I was on I was on mute. Uh, there's there's some other things we had crazy ideas about uh, moving the learning center, kind of the entry point to all the different learning paths and things, out of a website web browser into the product and prompting people during the getting started dialog box. Um, and the the person here that was talking about learning paths and things like that. I might mispronounce the name, uh, Vasco Kolokian. 
uh, had a good point about the learning paths. And I guess, Ala, we need to make sure that if somebody's like a data scientist versus a Linux kernel developer, yes. <laughs> during this onboarding experience, we, we give them the right thing. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. So the learning paths, uh, they are specific to the uh, kind of our task that a user uh, wants, uh, a developer wants to achieve uh, with Patreon. And of course, these uh, tasks and the goals are a bit different for data scientists and for like say, core Linux developers. And uh, we need to provide them with the uh, kind of a full uh, functionality set uh, for the uh, tasks and um, also, um, uh, give them all information about uh, this uh, smart coding assistance that is uh, like a, like a, a very popular and very important thing uh, in the IDE. And uh, one question that I already received today about the like learning path and switching from community to professional edition is also uh, a very important thing to to keep in mind. And uh, I already want to thank those who th those who uh, ask this question because that's uh, very important. Uh, by the way, can you see my screen, Ola? Uh, yes, I can see right, it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and let's add to this, the reason that Ala and I thought about adding this to the end of the webinar is, I mean, obviously because you have good ideas, but also a lot of the times the dynamic is someone who really loves PyCharm introduces it to someone on their team. And maybe part of the question here is what can we do to help you be more effective as a messenger on this? and maybe having access to us or any other ideas that people have about uh, how that information can be shared. Um, I, we got a comment in all of that the feature trainer option would be fantastic. People may not know how powerful it is. One question, is there an option to specify external PIP repository sources? Yes, you can configure more than one repository. Yes. I, Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and comment on that. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so uh, in this uh, screen, let, let me just, uh, uh, can I start presenting that? Um, yeah, let me change it back to you. Okay. Okay. I'll, uh, okay. Yeah, so this is uh, again in our help topics about uh, configuring packages and uh, here you can just in this window you can manage repositories i can show it right in pytrum um let's use this when you are going to add a new package you can just manage repositories and add like additional repositories like i did with the tetris Vodox. and this you can then install uh, packages from this and naturally, this is uh, also in our help topic. So yeah, the question is yes. Mm -hmm. We're getting a bunch of input on this. This is cool. Um, well, I should mention for those about, you talked about the EAP early access program. I suggest people for this next release to get involved in the 2020.3 EAP because we are working on some really good, interesting, useful stuff. Unfortunately, Ala, that means you've got a lot of documentation changes to make. Oh, yes, but uh, I really love that I have a lot of work. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting this stuff documented and already I started working because I believe the EP will start next week. So I'm already working on documenting some new features. Also, uh, there was a question that came in about other materials such as from an onboarding perspective, pointing people to paid courses such as Pluralsight. I should have mentioned that Michael Kennedy and Matt Harrison have a book, Effective PyCharm, that is available. And Michael Kennedy has a full course on his Talk Python to Me training site on mastering PyCharm. And so those are two good options for people that want either the 
the, the full treatment of either a book or a course. And Ala, can you think of some other things that I might be missing out on? I, I know there's a plural site course. Um, no, I think the cover that you might look at the stuff is very good. So I think it's it's a very good source of references for learning Python. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. And um, here's one from Matthew Koppel, who says, as a data engineer, I second the learning path suggestions. And we'll treat Matthew as kind of the exemplar of this person that's onboarding. If he's a new data scientist, which we've been thinking about a lot lately, right? Yes, yes, uh, we do. <laughs> yeah. Having a learning path, especially for data scientists, would really help. Can you talk about that a little bit? The, he basically says, I love PyCharm, but sometimes I find that discovering features that might help a particular use case might be difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about data scientists, learning paths, yes. and onboarding? Uh, yeah, yes, absolutely. So we're, we're looking for uh, how these uh, users of Python uh, who are not like primary developers, uh, how they uh, will use uh, our product. Uh, product uh, because uh, currently we do have, and I can also show you right in the help, we have some uh, scientific tools, uh, specific topics uh, about how to use uh, Jupyter Notebooks uh, and how to use our plugin for those who are work with um, uh, our language. And uh, we are developers actually. We develop uh, tools for the developers and we have a kind of a different set of minds, right? We uh, need our, the uh, data scientists uh, with the uh, kind of a bit of different approach so perhaps they don't uh, pay much attention to the code itself they just need to uh, briefly execute some some uh, um, uh, briefly to uh, briefly analyze some data briefly bring their data uh, connect to database for example and then execute and got the uh, some uh, plots and graphs to visualize this data so we work hard to uh, with the uh, UX designers to understand how this uh, learning paths should uh, look like. And we also appreciate if uh, when uh, you're reading the help topics, you can uh, leave your feedback about uh, what's uh, like, what's uh, uh, comfort, what, what's, uh, what is there any features you're comfortable with or are there any features that you want to be uh, implemented uh, differently uh, in PyCharm. So this is also a very uh, important uh, type of feedback for us. I will switch back to my screen and we'll go over a couple more points if that's okay. Sure. All right. Okay, Ala, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, it's okay. All right. Uh, Matthew, who just asked, made the point about data scientists, followed up and pointed out that what he meant was data engineers, not data scientists. Very interesting mm -hmm. point that we also talk about a lot inside PyCharm that there is an overlap between data scientists and kind of professional developers and there are people who do the same role in the same project who need all of the facilities of the IDE but need the data science features explained to them. Can you talk a little bit about those two personas and how we view them? Um, so yes, uh, uh, those are Sometimes, yeah, we are uh, we uh, see that uh, like uh, the developers who uh, are like work uh, with like are uh, like we uh, used to understand the development, right? Uh, create like uh, um, applications and Python and uh, the related technologies. They need to also switch to some uh, to analyzing data and. Uh, thus, we need to think about this uh, all development uh, ecosystem for them, uh, including some uh, like databases and uh, all stuff related to version control system and uh, like uh, working in the teams and uh, providing them with the uh, comfortable uh, environment 
to work uh, on the uh, remote hosts, for example, right, uh, including uh, all types of development sites like uh, running and uh, debugging code and uh, um, like uh, configuring environments. So we, uh, when we think about like data uh data scientists we do not uh uh we don't we do not ex exclude any of uh these development aspects so this is uh, also important for the the patch realm and i also want to keep uh all this information in the patch web hub to uh provide with this uh all available uh, options procedures okay one last one i'll take this one um and then we'll transition out uh, I have a comment from Sohel Qureshi. I apologize if I got your first name wrong. Uh, PyCharm is an excellent product with just fair marketing. We have to pitch the product on the pain areas of a developer, what they face and how we can solve them. And that's a good point. We just had this conversation about data scientist, data engineer, developer. And uh, we're, we're doing we're doing a lot of talking and discussion about both from a product perspective and a marketing perspective, knowing who we are, knowing who we aren't, getting our bullseye straight and putting our resources on that bullseye. So you make a good point and uh, we're listening on that and we're trying to sharpen uh, our points on that. Okay, Ala, got any points you'd like to add before we get out of here? Um. I know that we didn't cover the actual scope, right? But uh, I really encourage you to visit the Python Web Help and uh, learn more about the scopes and how to use it. It's a very nice thing and I encourage you to do this. It, we, we, we name it advanced, but uh, it can be quite simple. So we can just encourage you to try it. And uh, here is uh, in our Web Help. You can just search for it. Okay, thanks all for taking the time to talk with us about PyCharm's help. If any of you have any questions later, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by email or social media. If you'd like to get more information on PyCharm, please go to our website at jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. We'd love your feedback on this webinar, so please feel free to contact us on Twitter or in the after webinar survey. Fill out that survey. We actually pay attention to it. The recording will be made available on our YouTube channel soon. If you haven't already, please check out our PyCharm blog. On our blog, you'll find up-to-date PyCharm news about releases and events, in addition to educational resources. So for example, the recording of this webinar will be published there in a few days. We'll also provide some additional links and information from the presentation on the blog. That's all from us for today. Thank you very Thank much you for so joining much. us and hope you have Thank a nice you day. So much. Thank you.